Hello everyone and welcome to a most impressive game uh, from the penultimate round of this year's Grand K Chess Open. Uh, it's uh, uh, Hungarian Grandmaster uh, Pap Gabor uh, versus uh, Indian uh, International Master Divya Deshmukh. And uh, I know uh, Hungarian names are uh, presented backwards. Uh, he, his name is Gabor, his surname is Pap, but uh, when you write it, it should be Pap Gabor. Uh, but I don't know if you also pronounce it backwards. So if that's the case, I don't know, it's a little bit weird, you know, uh, last name going first and first name going last, but if it is, uh, I will refer to him for this video as as Pop Gabor, and uh, yeah, it's uh, th there's a good reason a lot of you have recommended this. Uh, features the French defense, and it's a really really complicated game one uh, that that is very difficult to calculate even in classical time format. So let's check it out. Uh, uh, Divya uh, on the hunt for her grandmaster norms. Uh, 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 let's check it out. Pawn to e4 by Pop Gabor uh, and pawn to e6. Divya goes for the French defense, d4, d5, and now pawn to e5. He goes for the uh, advanced variation of the French, c5, c3, and now knight to c6. We have knight to f3. This is the Paulson attack. Uh, queen to b6, the most popular reply. And now, uh, now the most popular reply here is pawn to a3, and it is considered to be the most solid. But but he goes uh, for uh, the fun stuff. He goes for bishop to d3. This is called the Milner Barry Gambit, uh, and it invites black to capture on d4, which Divya does. She goes c captures on d4, and he castles kingside. And now, while you could capture on c3, um, it, maybe it's uh, giving white a little bit too much um, to work with. For example, knight captures. Now you start bishop d7. Already bishop to e3 comes. And now if you capture on b2, the knight b5, uh, you run into a very, very dirty tactic. So you have to go back, then comes rook to c1, and once you play something like knight g to e7, you want to go to knight to g6, then bishop to g5, and you can play this if you're, you know, a masochist, but uh, maybe it's better not to. So instead she goes bishop to d7, uh, uh, in my c capture on d4, but this is a well-known theoretical line, uh, of course he will not take that. Rook to e1, we have a6, knight b to d2, and knight g to e7. We have pawn to h4, and now there is a game where h6 was played, but here we have d capture and c3 and it is now as of move 10 that we have a completely new game so b captures on c3 uh, and now knight to g6 the knight is excellently placed here and you don't have to worry about h5 as by playing knight to, to knight b to d2 uh, the f4 square is no longer guarded by the bishop so um uh, Pop needs to deal with this, or, or, or Gabor needs to deal with this, knight to b3, freeing up the f4 square for the bishop, and now uh, queen to c7, going back. Although we could, uh, uh, the, the reason, sorry, I just forgot to mention this, the reason why h5 is so strong isn't so much because of knight to f4, even though it can be played, the reason it's so strong is a, a bishop to c5. Or rather, why, why h5 is so weak, giving black such a strong position is bishop to c5. And I look at this, if you capture, bishop captures on f2 with check. If you go to h1, then just captures, opens up the rook. And if you go king to f1, then just captures rook to h1 coming next. I mean, this is a loss for white. So that's why knight to b3 has to be played. We have queen to c7 and queen to e2. Uh, a lot of pressure on the e5 pawn, so the queen uh, comes to help out. Now also uh, uh, defended three times is the e5 pawn and pawn to f6, just in time not to worry about pawn to h5 as you are ready to capture on e5. So e captures on f6, g captures and rook to b1 now, just nicely developing the rook, the b7 pawn might be a liability in the future, bishop to d6 uh, and now knight b to d4. Uh, h5 now is met with knight to e5 and black is just uh, having a, a, an amazing time here. So instead knight b to d4, putting pressure on that e6 pawn with the queen and with the knight, and now pawn to e5. We have knight to f5 and now bishop to c5. Of course, not allowing the trade. This is a, a very strong bishop. Knight to g7 with check and just king to d8. So this is why um, uh, I, I myself was never a French player. If you're a, a French player, you have to be willing to go king to e7, king to f8, king to d8. All of these king moves uh, that, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe I would enjoy playing it. I've just never tried. It'd be, it'd be interesting if I took like a month of playing the French with black and, you know, yeah, it'd be fun. But okay, maybe maybe for another time. We have bishop, uh, sorry, bishop to f5 um, uh, offering a trade of light square bishops and devia captures. We have captures, captures, gabarit captures and queen to d7 now. Puts pressure on the knight. Knight to g3 and now king to c7. Preparing to bring the other rook into the game. Pawn to c4, challenging the center. And now while you could play pawn to d4, I imagine she avoided it to, 
uh, avoid uh, giving up d4 square to the white knight, and then, okay, the bishop is attacked, the bishop has to go back, let's say h5, knight to f8. Looks weird, it can be played, but yeah, maybe don't allow this. So rook a to d8 is what you went for. C captures on d5, queen captures, and now knight to e4, putting pressure on that f6 pawn, and this is where the situation gets uh, incredibly uh, complicated. Uh, here she played bishop to b4, and she invested a lot of time. Starting with this position, she, she had 22 minutes on the clock, playing bishop to b4, uh, her clock ran down to 9 minutes uh, and uh, 40 seconds. So she invested some 11-12 minutes on this move, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, it, it, very tricky. Do you capture on f6, or do you react to your rook being attacked, or do you play something else? Uh, what do you play here? I'm just going to show you because there is no calculating this. Um, the, the most uh, precise way to play this is knight captures on f6, but most likely not for the reasons you guys are imagining. Knight captures on f6 comes with an attack on the black queen, and once queen to d3 is played, look at this, queen captures on d3, rook captures on d3, and now you will play rook captures on b4. And now look at this, knight captures, uh, or, or now you play pawn to h5 to free up the, uh, well, to remove the defender of the e5 pawn, but of course black will play rook to d6, and I'm only showing you the top engine line for both white and black, as this is one uh, immaculate line. Knight to e4, attacking the rook, now knight to d3, attacking the rook on e1, but also the bishop on c1, so rook to d1, and now rook to c6, leaving the knight hanging because you want to capture on c1. Now h captures on g6, rook captures on c1 with, uh, uh, sorry, rook captures on c1 with check, knight captures now g7, and now look at this, rook to g8 and knight to f6. Uh, attacks the rook on g8, and if you don't want to lose it, you have to capture on g7. Rook captures and knight to e8 check will pick up the rook. Absolutely a disgusting engine line. And now you have this position where, okay, you can play e4, attack the knight, knight will move, you will take the a2 pawn, uh, white will take the e4 pawn. And you have this position where you're up a knight, but uh, uh, you're down a pawn, and black has two connected pass pawns on the queen side. All in all, this is a draw. So, oh, you know, just uh, just to uh, show you this disgusting line. Uh, but uh, he did not want to calculate this. He just played bishop to d2, invested some four minutes uh, in the idea. Uh, bishop captures on d2, and now knight f. And now you have to decide uh, which knight to capture with. The problem is if you play knight e captures on d2, then knight captures on h4 is an option. And then after knight captures, queen captures on d2, and uh, she's uh, up two pawns, of course. Uh, maybe maybe you can save this, but it's not going to be easy. So instead, uh, he found knight f captures on d2, and now look at this, queen to e, um, uh, sorry, uh, pawn to f5, first challenging the knight, uh, and now queen to e3, offering the knight for queen to b6 check, and you can't really uh, accept uh, the knight, if you take this, then queen to b6 with check, king to d7, and then knight captures on e4, and you have the threat of queen captures on b7, knight to f6 check, also to win the black queen, uh, white has more than enough resources to... Uh, uh, to draw the game, but also uh, Divya was very low on time here, so it would be it would be a very very sharp position to play. But uh, Divya does not allow even this. She plays queen to d4. She stops queen to b6, and she just says, "I'm up a pawn. Uh, let's play. Let's play this end game." So queen to b3. Of course, um, uh, Gabor declines this. He wants to go for queen captures on b7. Now pawn to b5. O already down to four minutes on the clock. Uh, Divya is playing this for the win. We have knight to g knight to f3. Uh, still uh, probably holds, but after knight to g5, now the position is lost. Queen captures on d2, we have knight to e6 with check, king to b6, and now rook b to d1. And it's a, it's a fine position where many things are possible, but only one path to victory is certain. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find the only move that wins the game uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, you are uh, obviously uh, playing at Grandmaster Strength. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Queen to A5. This is the only move that wins. Divya played Queen to H6. Uh, even though it's the uh, second move recommended by the engine, uh, it uh, only yields a draw with proper play. But uh, you will see that proper play is more than you can find <laughs> over the board. Uh, so Queen to A5 is strongest because you will have time to bring the Knight to D4. And also after, let's say, um, uh, White takes the knight here, for example, you will play rook captures, you don't have rook captures as the rook on e1 is still hanging, so that's very important 
uh, part of the equation. And after king to f1, defending the rook, now you have time for knight d4 and you have two knights for a rook. You're also up a pawn. Uh, you will be winning this game. But in the game, Divya played queen to h6. She was already down to two and a half minutes. And now uh, knight captures and d8 was played, which does not work. The, the only way to draw this, and I'm just going to show it to you, is queen to c3 or queen c2. Basically, you have to uh, gain control over the c file. And now after, let's say, queen captures on h4, you will play queen to c5 check. And after king to b7, this rook to d6 move. Only move that draw. So if you don't see this, you will not get a draw this game. I'm just showing you these lines because they're they're disgusting so rook captures on d6 queen captures and now you have sufficient um, uh, resources for a draw let's say queen to e7 you offer a queen trade knight c5 check king b6 knight to d7 check and you cannot go back you allow the queen into the game you cannot go to a5 of course again you allow the queen to start checking and you're gonna lose so here it would just have to be settled by a repetition however knight captures on d8 was played again uh Gavar did not invest too much time spent like a minute here uh, and uh, that uh, now it's just lost. Rook captures on d8, rook captures on d8, knight captures on d8, and now pawn to a4, but it doesn't matter. Two knights will be stronger than the rook. Knight to c6, a captures on b5, a captures. Now rook to b1, threatening queen captures, but just pawn to b4. Uh, winning in all positions, we have queen to e6, uh, going after the f5 pawn. Uh, and now just queen captures on h4, uh, saying that the uh, f5 pawn will not be uh, uh, relevant to the game. Queen captures on f5, knight g to e7, and everything is defended. The knights are defending each other, the knight defends e5, the knight defends this, queen defends this. So there's very little you can actually do here. You could try uh, finding some checking ideas, maybe find some sort of a perpetual... Uh, but realistically, it doesn't exist. Queen to d3 is played, going for that a6 square, pawn to h5. We have rook to a1, uh, just queen to d4. Even allowing queen to a6 check, because it doesn't matter. Queen a6 check, king to c7, rook to c1, now just pawn to h4. We have rook to c4, attacking the queen and also the pawn on h4, uh, queen to b6. Offering a queen trade, as the, of course, the end game is winning. The two knights will overcome the rook. Uh, queen to a1, and now king to b7 unpinning so you can improve the position of your knights rook captures on h4 and now pawn to b3 which of course would not be possible uh, had the pawn not been pushed to b4 prior to that queen to b2 uh, blocking the advancement of the pawn and now knight to d4 uh, we have rook to h7 pinning the knight but just queen to c5 defending and now you will slowly improve you will move the king you will get the knight over here uh, slowly but surely you are pushing forward king to h2 king to b6 we have rook to h3 uh, and now queen to c2 and that's all there is queen to a3 was played knight e to c6 uh, rook to h6 pinning the knight but just pawn to b2 we have queen to b4 with check as the knight cannot move but it doesn't matter knight to b5 and rook captures on c6 was played uh, hoping that if queen captures on c6 you can uh, eliminate the pass pawn but of course king captures on c6 was played and he was in this position on move 53 that uh, Pab Gabor resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more uh, to be done here. So a very, very uh, impressive game uh, with the black pieces against a very strong grandmaster by, uh, for Divya Deshmuk and uh, she finishes with 7 out of 9. Uh, these are her opponents and uh, yeah, it's funny that uh, Hans who won the tournament faced only 3 grandmasters uh, throughout the, the 9 runs whereas she uh, fa faced 4 grandmasters. Rasmus Vane, David Gavrilescu, Gabor Pap and Mark andrea Maurizzi. So she started with three wins, and then she lost to Rasmus Svane, uh, then uh, two victories uh, against Fide Mestre Tamas Tanska and Benjamin Wagner, uh, then a draw against um, uh, Romanian Grandmaster David Gavrilescu, then uh, a victory to Gavr Pap, and in the final round it was a really crazy game against Marc Andrea Maurizzi, uh, world junior champion. Uh, she was lost, but it was such a crazy game that uh, he, he could not find a path to victory in the, in the end. Um, it, it ended in a draw. But yeah, very impressive result uh, in such a field. Uh, she finished. She finishes in shared 11th place uh, out of 935 players, which is uh, incredible, uh, with a rating performance of 2598. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, I, I'm pretty sure she she got her grandmaster norm for this performance. So obviously a, a very fine result, uh, uh, probably not probably most certainly the the best result of her career so far. Uh, and I have also learned, as Hans Niemann tweeted on his account, that he uh, has been accepted to the Grand Chess Classic and he will be playing the main event last year, unless he is lying, but who knows, you know.
uh, I'm pretty sure he, he was accepted. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. A very nice, uh, very nice uh, handle handling of the French defense. Uh, if you enjoyed it, you know, do try it in your own games. I might be, I might try to pull off like a a month of playing exclusively the French defense. Who knows? I might be, might actually be a French player. And I, I don't even know it. I've never tried. Uh, so yeah, hope you hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Joyful Chess Lover, Andreas Rosenthal, Beaster Bunny, uh, Jeffrey Clayman, and Locus Teokaris for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, but uh, mostly covering the the FIDE candidates tournament that starts tomorrow. So my next video will most likely be about the candidates tournament. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.